welcome back. Today's video is in partnership with The Good and the Beautiful and I'm gonna be sharing with you guys what a lesson from the Science for Little Hearts and Hands science unit, the brand new one that just came out, Sparks and Stars, what that looks like. This will be a really good opportunity for you guys to see firsthand kind of how we navigate through this. As a mom of five, I have older children that have used the traditional science units from The Good and the Beautiful, but it's always been a little bit difficult to keep my younger ones engaged when we're going through those science lessons. I try to do our science and our history all together, and so the science for little hearts and hands has been a really great addition for our families science learning. So this is the brand new science from the Little Hearts and Hands series from The Good and the Beautiful. Um, we've got one more coming out. I think that they were not going to do it after this. This is going to be the last one, but the response has been so overwhelming that you guys can, can count on one more coming out. So that is really exciting. There are also two others um, of these, so I will have those linked down below. If you use my link, it really benefits me. It helps The Good and the Beautiful to track where their sales and where their interest is coming from. Um, I don't get a kickback from it, but it does help me as a creator for them to know that you guys saw my video and I'm sending you over from my channel. So like I said, this is one of the three that are already available and there will be one more coming out. But the focus of this science curriculum, this unit, is about sparks, so electricity, gravity, energy, um, force in motion, all the way to stars, everything that is in the galaxy. It also covers simple machines, and what you'll see within these Science for Little Hearts and Hands curriculums, what you'll see in them, um, the chapters that you go through, most of those have their own units. So what it covers in within planets in here, you can go and check out the solar system unit from the good and the beautiful. And then the force in motion, gravity, electricity, simple machines, all of those topics can are within the motion and simple machines unit from the good and the beautiful. So all of this is just done and put in a digestible, um, small bite size way for your younger ones to really start to learn the concepts that are going to be studied in greater detail as they get older. And so I really, really enjoy this. One thing I like about this is that if you're going through a science unit with your older kids, you can pull this one out alongside and include your older kids and your younger kids every once in a while in a lesson. And so it really helps your younger ones feel like they're a part of it. But the discussion questions and the information and even the activities are still fun enough to do with your older elementary and your middle school kids too. So this was a great addition to the Good and the Beautiful's um, science curriculum. I'm so excited that they did it and I'm so excited that they are going to be doing one more. So enough talking. Let's go ahead and jump into this lesson. We are going to be doing the lesson on force in motion today. Our family is working its way through the motion and simple machines unit from the Good and the Beautiful. So I thought this would be a perfect one for us to do today. So my eight-year-old son Jude is already familiar with the concepts that we're going to go over in this lesson lesson and it'll be a good introductory lesson to these concepts for my little six-year-old daughter Ingrid. The toy is sitting still by itself, right? Mm -hmm. What if I think about it really hard? Can I make the toy move? No. Let's try. Has it moved? No. Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> so um, we weren't able to think about the toy moving and make it move. It can't move on its own. So what would make this toy move? Gigi, can you show me? How could I make that toy move? Uh, I can move, make that toy move with, my, with your hands, right? So when you weren't touching this car, it wasn't in motion, right? Or it wasn't moving from one place to another, which is another example of motion. As soon as you pushed or pulled the toy, it moved, right? Mm -hmm. So Gigi said that we could push it, she also said that we could blow on it. That would make it move as well. That would be force, using a force. A force is an action that causes an object to change its motion to move the toy. Do you, do you remember learning about force? We learned about force, right? In science, right? In the bigger science unit that we did with you guys, with you older kids, we learned about force. There are many different kinds of motions and forces, and they can be measured. Let's pretend to visit an amusement park to learn more about force and motion. 
We're gonna use this little pawn. What lesson are we on? Lesson three. So let's turn to lesson three, force in motion. Here we are. Jude, you can put this together. You would like that. Ooh, cool. All right, punch out the two pieces. Here's one. Fold each piece in half so that the pictures are on the outside. All right, so I am pulling up the audio narration for this. If you guys do not have the homeschool app from The Good and the Beautiful, it has all of the lesson narrations, videos, all of it in one spot, which is really nice because then you don't have to go on the website and stuff. So I'm gonna find Little Hearts and Hands, click on it. I'm gonna go to Sparks and Stars, lesson three. Right here, let's see if it focuses. Lesson three, Force in Motion, and go ahead and click on that and we'll listen to it as we go through the lesson. Motion is measured by an object's direction and speed. And I would say, we're going at a slow speed. Would you agree? Lots of rides here at Newton's move in other directions and go much faster. Let's hop off the carousel and go find something else to ride. An object in motion can't change its type of motion without a force acting on it. Force is a push or a pull that causes an object to change its state of motion. It's your turn for the slide. Go ahead and sit down at the top. Are you moving yet? You're not, because no force has been going to give you a gentle push to get you going. I'll go down right behind you. See you at the bottom. It's called gravity will pull the ride toward the earth without anything actually touching and its material is packed tightly together. Gravity is the force that keeps us from floating away. So in total, that audio narration was nine minutes. So it was a really short um, audio narration and you could see it had the kids move this little pawn through the amusement park and it kept them active. They had to listen for the chime and every time it chimed, they moved it to the next part of the amusement park. All right, moving on, we are gonna go over some discussion questions and then we have a little activity and then we're good to go. Jude, what is the force on earth that keeps our feet on the ground? Um, gravity. Gravity, gravity is the force that keeps us on ground. What, is, what needs to happen to an object for it to change motion? In order for an object to change motion, what has to happen? Uh, push. Someone needs to A use push. Force. force. You guys are right. Ingrid, when you said it needs to be pushed, that is a form of a force. Or so, a fan will make it blow. Or a fan. You really like that idea of a fan moving stuff around. But yes, a push <laughs> or a pull is a form of a force. So in order for something to move, there has to be a force applied to it. All right, last question. If you could design a ride for Newton's Thrills and Chills Park, what kind of motion and force would it have? You think of rides at amusement parks. What are some of the force that the forces that you see at play for these rides? Um, the bumper cars when like you when like using the drive is that the force? You're right, bumper cars. And You're right, you and when you slide. and when you go down the slide, when you hit a bump, when you hit someone in your bumper car, what usually happens to them? They bump, they bump, and then they um have to like they like hurt. Sometimes they can hurt themselves. Well, sometimes they can get hurt, which is not very good. But it usually will push their vehicle forward, right? Yeah. It pushes their bumper car forward, which is a form of motion, right? Yep. Jude, what did you say about, what What ride did you tell me about? What were you saying? Um, the water slide, how like, when you go down the water slide, it moves, and the slide keeps going down, so it goes faster. You're right, yeah, so it helps you. So the water acts like a force to push you faster down the slide. If you guys think of a big giant roller coaster, in the very beginning of a roller coaster, what do they normally do with all the chairs, all the seats? Does it get pu pulled up or does it go down yet? It usually goes pulled up. up. It gets pulled and up, yup. And then it races down, down but yeah, there's a force yeah, that pulls yeah. it up first, right? And then, and then 
gravity helps to pull it down from the big giant hill, right? Mm -hmm. Gravity is the force that has it come down. So we're going to do a fun activity to help us talk more about motion. All right, and I'm gonna have you guys help us to build it. So we have a cookie sheet. Woo, we have a cookie sheet here. And is this cookie sheet bumpy? Or what is the feel, what is the texture of it? Um, it's soft. smooth. Soft, it's smooth. So we have a smooth surface. Um, Car. Those um, two game boxes right there. Let's get those two board games. These ones? The ones right, yep, yeah, right there. That's it, those are good ideas. We've got a giant pile of board games, so we might as well <laughs> use them for something, right? And we're gonna, you, Jude, what do you think we're gonna use these board games for? To make it taller. To make it taller, which is called, we're gonna make a ramp, right? We're gonna turn it into a ramp. Okay, Gigi, go ahead and push it down. Oh boy, that light. Mom, watch. I'm watching. Good job. All right, do it one more time. When I edit this, we'll try to make it in slow mo. So when it comes down like this, the force of gravity is pulling it down because it's on an angle, it's right? It's getting stuck. It is. What if we don't have a, a ramp? What if it's flat? It Oops. won't move. It won't move. It doesn't move anywhere, right? But if it's up, it's in the we have gravity pulling it down. If it stands like this, it up the wrong Well, you're making a ramp that goes this way. Yeah, but hold this, hold that this okay, way. you want me to make a ramp like this for Not you? like oh. that. The, tiny, tiny. the tiniest little angle is all it needs, right? Mm -hmm. A little bit of a ramp. So what if... So we need this book and make a ramp. You want to make the ramp higher? No, yeah. All right, make, let's make the ramp higher. What if we line this? Okay, let's take the, let's take the um, boxes out. Can we do one more? One more? This thing's going to, it's just going to, you're going to blink. This is the highest ramp ever. Guys, ready, watch. Okay, so we see how fast it goes like that. What if we put, hold on, Gage. What if we use some paper towel? Do you think that it would slow it down? Yeah. Oh, look at that. I, I said, yeah. That made friction. Friction is a force. Remember, or dude? It still went a little bit fast. We learned about friction. We learned more about friction in the other science Backwards. unit. Let's make a hypothesis. Do you think that it's gonna go faster without the parchment paper or slower? Slower. So you think it's gonna be slower? What do you think? Actually, I think faster. Faster? faster. Okay, so with the parchment paper is 1.28. Ready? Go. Oh, hold on, you gotta, hold on, you gotta let go when I tell you to go, okay? Ready, go. It was faster without the parchment paper. 0.80, All right, let's let's time it. Ready? Go. Go. 1.98. So close to two. So close to two. It was 1.98. You you want to see if you can make it faster or make it slower? All right, ready? Go. Oh, that was faster. 1.86. Our. Uh, let me see. Let me try it back. Our variables are not very consistent. Put your feet down, ma'am. All right, ready? Oh, sorry, I pressed, I pressed start and I wasn't ready. All right, guys, and that was it. That was one full lesson from the Little Hearts and Hands Science Unit, the Sparks and Stars from the Good and the Beautiful. I hope you guys enjoyed today's lesson and it gave you an idea of what to expect on these lessons. Um, I just feel like it is just enough information. It really is approachable and um, it's, and a bite size what? Look, we're to all three. We are gonna be occupied now for a yeah. good amount of time. So this is even more fun, you know? Kills two birds with one stone. Yeah. We're learning stuff and we're having fun. Yeah, and that's the more. point, right? So anyways, yeah, guys, my link is down below two, for right? this brand new beautiful science unit. We did not do the um, storybook today because today was an audio narration, but it does come with a storybook. I think it's every other lesson. You'll open this up and read through it. Beautiful illustrations and photos and lots of fun for the kids. Oh my. Lots of fun. Oh, Pop the Pig is gonna, we are gonna fly through here. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later. Okay, Mom, ready?